Hello. Real cold. Real cold today. <laughs> it's cold. What a bipolar state, right? It is. Yesterday we were like in a like a long sleeve t-shirt and it was like 70 degrees. It was beautiful. 70 and sunny. And now we're back to Now I got a hat on. <laughs> 30 something. 30 something, the wind's whipping. Two coats. <laughs> Two coats. But I'm Jeremy. I'm Macy. And we are LSH Live. We're here giving you guys the best training tips we can give you through this little quarantine deal. Uh-huh. As much as we can. We're going to try to stay outside. Uh, we'll see how it goes. It's a little His chilly. Choice. <laughs> it's a different mic. It's a different mic. Now, the mic that we had yesterday, I was not happy with at all. No, we had, we had to take it out halfway through. I feel like we're really far out. Are we? Oh, there we yeah, go. That's that? <laughs> I feel like I'm like... It's drifting away. Here. So, I'm holding the mic. We don't have Kel today. She no. would be too cold. Yeah, it's too cold outside. Yep. But we're going to try to uh, do some riding, answer some questions that we had yesterday when we were riding. Um, as far as... The rib control stuff, a lot of questions on that, a lot of questions about backing, um, backing well, getting your horses back up, things like that. Um, let me know, guys, how the audio is. If it's too windy, we can take it inside. We can try it inside. I'd like to stay outside, as long as Macy can see before her eyeballs freeze. <laughs> but My eyeballs will freeze. We'll try it, and we'll see where we're at. But Does the audio sound good? Yeah, can we get somebody to say up or? if the audio is good? Shouldn't be any like clicks or pops or buzzing today. Or Hopefully. is it like super windy? Like, is it terrible? Yeah, if it's really windy, then we can make adjustments too. What do you Can't think? See the check. What do you think, Doc? Okay. okay. All right, I'm right, saying so thumbs up, so I think it's Thumbs good. up. All right, so take this, Macy. Okay. Okay. And we'll, we'll go from here. Can we turn it around? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, perfect. Thanks, guys. Okay. Audio sounds good. Audio sounds good? Yep. Okay, perfect. I bought two mics because I wasn't sure what was going to happen. I had a feeling the one wasn't going to work the way I wanted it to. Yeah, the other one didn't work yesterday. No. I don't know. It was good, like, if you leave it sitting still, it's great. But if the cord gets bumped at all, then it was awful. Yeah, it was really bad. <laughs> Sorry. So, we did lead change with this guy yesterday. Um, so, I expect him to be a little bit up today. I expect him to be a little bit frisky. Um, should probably happen, right? Not going to be too worried about it. It's a lot colder than it was, so if he's going to be fresh, that's perfectly fine. Um, so watching the video back yesterday, some things I liked about him were that he was really swinging his legs. I loved seeing that, right? But what I want to see is I want to see his neck drop down a little bit further, okay? So we talked before about how it's going to be really hard for him to do his job if he's got his neck up, right? If he's bowed up right here in the middle of his neck, it's going to be kind of hard to get him to do exactly what we're looking for him to do because he wants to fold up, you see right there first, okay? He's got to drop right here, okay? So right here, dropping down, right in there is where I'd love to see him stay all the time. It, it, we talk a lot about where your horse's top line should be, right? One of the golden rules that we have is if he's elevated right here, if this piece is up, then he's probably not lifting right here, okay? So he's got to drop this down in order to lift this up, okay? So the other piece that is, when we go to do things with our horses, we want to have something to push things to, okay? So that's what we were talking yesterday about, how a horse got to hold his shoulders up on his own. I think somebody had asked me um, what I look for in a young horse, and one of the big things is lifting their shoulders. He's got to do his shoulders on his own. So when I was riding the Charlie horse the other day, I was mostly concerned about getting his shoulders up, making sure he keeps his shoulders up on his own. And I had said, when we go to back a horse up, what I want my horse to understand is if my hands go like this, then he needs to be bringing his shoulders back. It's time to reset, roll your shoulders back, okay? So I'm gonna do a couple examples of how we do that and what that looks like and what those turns should look like because I think there's a lot of confusion as far as how that works, okay? So what we're talking about is backing this horse up, just that old 4 each back up, right? I can back my feet out here and make sure his head comes up in the time being, right? So when I first teach this, I teach most things in three stages, right? So we talked about the three stages of lead changes yesterday. Same thing for my backup. My first stage of backup is just right here. When I pull, you bring me your shoulders. And I don't care where his neck goes. And I think a lot of people get distracted by where this neck is, and they don't, um, they don't ever get a functional backup, right? You have to keep in mind, why are we backing in the first place, right? Like, what are we trying to accomplish with our backup? Well, it should be a reset button to put him on his hip, right? To take his weight that was falling down and shift it back onto his hip. Okay, that's what our backup should probably be for. So, if I'm going to teach my horse how to back up, I'm going to come here, give me your shoulders, then I'm out. 
okay? So it's just kind of lean back and then grab a hold and then out. But see how I'm not pulling real hard. If I were to pull and he just stop and stand there, then I'm gonna just stay with that same amount of pressure. Don't add more, because that's rushing him, right? I don't wanna rush him into making a decision. I want him to figure it out for himself. So I'm right here, pull, good. He gives me his shoulders nice. So there's some lightness in that backup. He moves his shoulders willingly and quickly, right? There's a sense of like flow and rhythm in that. So what I'm really looking for, that backup is a two beat gait, right? So I come right here, I back up, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, got stuck, right? So there he's sticky. So I'm gonna stay in, I'm gonna keep backing until he gives me there, one, two, one, two. Good, good. So remember, it's about training. There's my lick and chew and my puff. So it's about training for the release. I train always looking for a way, when am I getting out? What am I gonna be satisfied with? What am I gonna be happy with? Train for that release. Don't train for when he stops moving and then get out and be like, well, that was fine, right? Which is what a lot of people do, right? They'll get, they'll get about half of it done and be like, well, he stopped backing, so I guess I'm done, I'm on to the next thing. So when I go to back a horse up, I'm gonna take a hold, lean back, bring my arms to me, and I want his, his body and his shoulders to come to me, right? So very basic backup right here. And I'm looking for that good rhythm, right? One, two, one, two, one, two, across it, okay? So then the second phase of my backup is gonna be after I've got my shoulders coming to me pretty willingly, right? After he brings his shoulders and he's pretty soft about it, so I can stop his shoulders and bring him back to me. See, I've got just one finger on those reins. That's what makes him back up. I'm not pulling real hard or anything like that. After I've got that, then I'll start bumping his head down, okay? So I'll ask him, all right, let's go ahead and back up and let's drop our neck down while we back up, okay? So I'm right here. I'm gonna back first and then I can shuffle my hands and see, he's gonna get a little lost about that. See him slow his legs down? He's gonna back up, so continue giving me your shoulders, thank you, and let's drop our head down. There, better, better, don't lose your shoulders. I'm gonna turn, because it's not quite there. I'm gonna keep backing. And I've just got my legs close by, not doing a whole lot with him yet. And I'm just asking for him to be soft in his face while he backs up. There, better. If I get closer to what I want, I give him a little break and I ask again. So see that little slide forward of my hands? Break, ask again, right here, back, good, good, good. Now I have a little bow in my neck, and I don't know if you can see that from there, but I have a little bulge right here. So when he's backing, he's trying to leak his body out right here, trying to bulge this out, which is gonna get him crooked in his backup. And you can see it, Macy, if you come right back there, and look down that line, look where he got crooked. You see that dark spot in the dirt? See my line, how it got real crooked? That's all that bow in his neck. So I'm gonna come right here in front of you guys. I'm gonna try to back again. I wanna back straight up. Back straight, shuffle my hands, drop his neck down. And see, when I try to drop him in the middle, when I take his neck and get that bow out of that right side, that's when he has a hard time, okay? So I wanna make sure that he doesn't get that bow in his neck. So making sure that I, I pull straight and stay until he's straight. That question? Um, yep. What do you do with horses that brace and lock their shoulders when they back? You got to stay in, right? And it's not, like I was saying, it's not stay in and add more pressure. And I think that's where people get in trouble. Like if I go to ask right here and his shoulders are real bracy, then I'm just going to maintain that same amount of pressure. He already told me that that's plenty, that he doesn't understand what he's supposed to do. So I'm going to maintain that same amount of pressure. Now that's where I see people go wrong, right? They go to back their horse up and that horse locks down and picks his head up and they just sit there. I don't mind that, right? That's gonna give him a chance to think about what the answer should be. If I were to get this horse that's locked right here and just keep leaning harder or tighten up on my reins and lean harder, I'm rushing him, right? And what he's gotta do is unlock these legs. So I'm gonna maintain that same amount of pressure right here to say, hey, give me these shoulders good. There, thank you, right? The second I feel those shoulders unlock, then I'm out, all right? And that release is a big deal. Make sure you ride and you make it very black and white. Very like, this is right, this is wrong. The more clear you are with what you're looking for and when you're getting out, the faster he'll learn it. Okay, so right here, back, good, out. Now I'm gonna ask for his neck when I back up, so I'm here, I'm gonna turn him, back, shuffle my hands, batter, batter. Got a little bulge on this right side, so gonna kick my hip to the right. Good, batter, 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 batter. Batter, batter, good, 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 there. 
okay? And see how I can stay in for a long time and I can back a long way as long as I'm not rushing him, right? If he's not thinking that that backup is a punishment, it's just a reset, then he's gonna happily back a distance, right? Like I went all the way down there and I came all the way back, right? So I went probably 80 feet, 100 feet down that way and I came 100 feet back, right? So think about your strides. How many strides of practice am I getting for my backup? He already backs good so I can stay in and ask for a little more. I just can calmly back up right here. He's not gonna get frustrated. He's not gonna get flustered. He shouldn't get upset about this. This is just another gear, right? This is just another, hey, we're gonna go backwards now. We're not gonna trot, we're not gonna lope, we're gonna go backwards, we're gonna kind of just back up. It's just another gear that he can practice, okay? Just another gear he can practice, and I can go all that way, and he doesn't end up any frustrated or anything like that. Like he's got his ears forward, he's not upset about this. It's not a punishment, okay? If you make your backup a punishment, then he won't like you for it. Go ahead. How do you get smooth transitions between gates? Dropping him down. Yep, so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, we'll see how many questions we have, but I had a little bit of an idea. We're going to work on a little bit of hunter trot with this one. Um, and that'll be a good example of down transitions and stuff, okay? So here, I'm gonna go to my backup again. Now that was phase two, right? I started asking for his face because I already have his shoulders, okay? And I'm gonna try to back up and then I'm gonna add my feet and see if you can tell a difference when my feet come in, right? We talked yesterday, the words we used were back up with your back up, okay? So remember, when I start adding my spurs, that's when my horse should round his back. So what you should see is you should see his back come up you'll probably see his head go down a little bit further, and you'll probably see his legs get a little bit more fiery. He should back with a lot better rhythm, okay? So I'm gonna ask for my regular back up first, right here, regular back, feet are out, right? Backing, I'm gonna add my spurs, right in there, there. See the difference right there? See his neck roll up into me? Now his belly comes up. That's a much more difficult back up Way better, right? Can you guys see the difference right there? So that's what happens when I add my spurs to my backup. My horse starts to round, and all of this kind of just settles into my hands. It just kind of releases, right? You could spend a long time chopping at your head and neck to get that, but if you just got your belly up, you'd find it, right? That neck would just release, and it would just, it just kind of falls into your hands, okay? And that's what we're really looking for. If you don't have their backup, then that neck doesn't really fall into your hands, and it doesn't, you're just gonna have to work at it. Like you gotta keep chopping your hands. We wanna avoid having to do this the whole time we ride, right? I don't wanna be chopping and pulling the whole time I'm riding. Okay, I wanna come here, move, stop, back, round, up into it. There, pick your belly up. Good, 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 I'll take it, okay? So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna push his ribs this way. Good, making sure this horse stays square between my feet. I still have a little bow right here that I want to get out of there, right? So this is my warm up, checking my ribs. Got a question? Yep, why do you lean forward when you're backing up? Uh, just to get off his back a little bit, get a little bit of weight off of him, right? So think about when I, when I squeeze my spurs, you see me back up, right? I'm coming up off his back. This is really what I'm doing, okay? It's not this dramatic, because I don't want to get smashed in the face, but it's a little bit of weight off his back. And that was the same thing when I went to my lateral yesterday. I'm picking up off his back a little bit. We can't sit on his back like a sack of potatoes and expect him to push up into us, okay? So remember, if I've got all my weight bearing down on his back, he's not gonna push up against that. So I'm gonna give him a little bit of room whenever I go to my feet and kinda come up off his back, okay? And that just is one thing where it'll help me train him a little faster if he can find that opening himself, right? If I give him room, and I come up off his back a little bit, like I'm standing in my stirrups. I've got bow spurs wrapped into him, right? I'm standing up in my stirrups right there, okay? And that's gonna pitch me forward a little bit, all right? So it's not like intentional that I'm sitting forward. It's nothing to do with that, but it's just coming up off his back. And you'll see that a lot when we're riding. You'll see us get up on him a little bit. Like I'll get up here, because I wanna get up off his back. And there's like, there's daylight between my saddle and my seat, right? Like I'm up here, and that just gives him room to lift his back underneath him, okay? So that's the same thing whenever I go to my up transitions. So for the lady that asked me about transitions, right? How do we go up and down gears? I bounce in my seat, I lift my weight up off his back if I wanna go up in gears. 
So I'm going to squeeze him from underneath with my spurs right here. I'm going to squeeze this right spur. Here's my side pass. Squeeze my left spur. Tap my right, holding my left, and bounce. Okay? I'm going to come up in the saddle. All right? And it works a couple different things. So when you come up off his back, you give him room to come up to you. All right? I want to give him room to lift his back and come up underneath of me. Okay? So your options for doing up transitions are what? You can use your voice. You could kick him, right? You could whip him, right? You could whip him with a crop or whatever, but you're probably going to be using your feet and your voice for sure. The problem that I have is we spend a lot of time teaching these horses to stay up whenever my spurs come in. So I can't really like kick him. It shouldn't make a ton of forward, right? So if I want him to come up a gear, I know that if he picks his body up, his legs are free to do whatever gear I'm looking for, right? So I can pick my body up off of his back to help him lift and then give him a voice command to take a gear. Then I'm not kicking him to go into a gear, right? Because anytime I'm using my legs to go forward, he's probably gonna be rushing away from me, right? We want our spurs to mean come this way, all right? The other advantage to bouncing on their back is that horses brace against pressure they know is coming, right? So to, to put that example, if you've ever been standing in front of somebody and they do one of these on you, you're gonna tense up, right? You're gonna tighten up. It's the same thing, like if I took my foot and I went way out here, like see how he got kind of nervous about that? When he have it coming, he knows it's gonna come in hard to his side. So what he's gonna do is brace against it, all right? We don't want him to brace against us because that would be really bad. I don't want to brace his ribs against my leg coming in. So I don't want to kick a whole lot. But if I bounce my seat on his back, he's going to brace against me up here, which is really what I'm looking for, right? If I slam down onto his back and when I lift, he knows it's coming. That's the same as this, where he would normally brace this way. He's going to brace this way. And that's really what I'm looking for anyway. Good question. Yep. Is there a reason why he seems like he's overbridled? Yep. Yep. I'm asking for a lot of face, right? So remember, we're not training for a show, right? This is not show day. Okay. So remember that we are working on getting him in the bridle, right? He's got to drive to the bit. So the vast majority of our workouts at home are under here, right? Now, the problem that we have with this horse, I would love to see him push his face out on my hands. Okay. I would love to see him stretch his nose out and get rid of this bulge right here. But this is a horse that we've had in training for about three months now, right? So having this horse from a program where he's used to being banged on, he learned not to trust your hands and hide from them, okay? The only way we're going to fix an over-bridled horse is by bridling him up and teaching him to trust our hands. And that's a big thing. Like, there's nothing you're going to do to him to get him to stick his nose out except teach him it's acceptable to bring your nose in, right? That that's a position we're looking for, because I'll show you what that looks like. If I over bridle him and I jog, so I'm gonna work him right here, so that this isn't a way of evading my hands. And that's why I ride so tight rein, so that he's gotta sit in my reins and sit in my fingertips, right? I'm working his chin, working on him right here, dropping his neck down. This is my workout, right? This is the gym. So when I go to turn loose and we go to pose at a horse show, his nose can go straight back out, right? And it didn't used to do that. It used to stay hidden, okay? Right. Only by handling his face and teaching him, you can trust my hands are not going to hurt you, right? Is he going to learn to not over bridle when you take a hold of it, okay? I'd love to see him stay right there on that vertical when I go to take a hold, and I can work him right here. But see how he doesn't drop here first? He folds up here first. And that's one of our biggest issues with this horse. And one of the things that we have to work really hard on getting out of it, okay? It's not intentionally over bridling, but it's teaching him to trust our hands by handling his face, okay? We've never had one of our horses have a problem being over bridled, but they get handled a lot, right? Like I'm gonna ask him to be right here. And I'm gonna ask for lots of flexion in that pole because I want that to be willing, right? It's been taken away from him up until this point. So I want this to be willing and soft so I can work him over here with his chin over, with his neck soft, 
and then send him back down and have him go out to showable right there, right? See where that looks like a showable head and neck carriage, okay? But I want to get this look for my show pen. Remember, we don't get a beach body by posing in front of the mirror or by going to the beach, right? We get a beach body by going to the gym and working out and then showing it off at a horse show. So remember, we're bringing you guys into our workouts. That's what a workout should look like. It, doesn't, it shouldn't look like going to the horse show, right? He's not going to get show ready by coming out here and doing this all day, right? And this isn't fun for me. It's not fun for him. He's going to get bored of this really quick, okay? So I want to make sure that I'm teaching him how to use himself and how to get around and do things behind that bridle, okay? It's a good question. It's a very good question. So coming here, I want to get him in the bridle. So when I have this up in my seat, up in my horse, when I want to do a down transition, I'll just stop lifting it, right? So it's the same thing when I go to lope. If I want to lope him up, take a hold, lift my seat, come up underneath of me, right? First time I've loped this horse today, see where he's at. A little fresh compared to yesterday. So I'm going to kind of work my hands, drop that neck down, closing my feet. There, see him reach for that bit? That's what we taught him to do. So right here, close my hands, work my feet. Closing my hands, there, I want to drop in, stay up and square, stay up and square. Notice I worked his bad way first. I want to make sure I'm working the worst side more than the good side. It's my job as his coach to work on his weaknesses, not show off his strengths at home. So I'm here, loaf around, just warming him up, not really asking for a lot yet. Not asking for much, just a little shuffle, kind of see where I'm at for the day. Let him warm up, let him get the, the jitters out, the cold breeze going, riding him along. So this is my normal workout, right? Lope my circles, warming him up, little shuffles in my hands. Oh, I'm going to trust my feet, I'm going to go straight. See where I'm at. See, and I'm working his mouth, right? Asking for that chin to be soft in my hands. If I were to turn loose of it and give him some room, that chin should go back out, but it keeps his shoulders up. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so here, stop, back, belly up, pull my spurs, take that body up to me. Good boy, good boy. Oop. He laughed on me. See, I gave him a chance though, right? I gave him a chance to tell me where are you going to go. He said, oh, I'm going to walk off as soon as you pet me because we're going to... We're going to be moving, right? I want him to know you've got to stay right here and wait for orders, okay? And that's a big time thing that I see with people's horses where they stop and they, they go to do something, they turn those reins loose and that horse just walk, rushes off into the sunset. We can't have him just wander away from us. He's got to stay right here with us. And that's going to be true of whether it's a lope to a stop like that or a turn, right? If I were to turn him right here and do my pivot, come around, Not a good pivot, right? Where's his weight? See how he's walking his back end around? <laughs> bad pivot. Put him back on his back end, shift his weight back, go to a turn again. Now he got lost again right there. See how I'm not rushing him? It's still not a good back, or not a good pivot, right? We're going to back. We're going to turn. Until he's got his weight on his back end all the time. Nope. See him wander that back end? We'll back. We'll turn. Keep your weight on your butt. No, we lost it. Back, turn, just the training process right here. This is what it looks like, right? Back, keep your weight on your butt, turn. Where's he going? Look, I turn loose. That's not the right answer. We're turning, right? My outside leg is on. He's not staying with me. Where are we going? There. I want to be able to turn loose and go to my foot and you keep your weight on your back end. He's going to wander out right there, so he shifts his <laughs> weight onto his front. Wrong answer. Come back, turn. Right here. Working him across, hands down. Is this a turn? Is it forward? But he's telling me, when you go to your left foot up by my shoulder, I'm going to go that way. Right? Wrong answer. Stay right here under me. Turn. Turn. Hands down. Keep turning. There. Off. Good. Nope. Untrack this back in. I'm going to back. I'm going to turn. Good. Turn loose. Where do you go? Do you stay here? 
Good pull. We got some work to do. <laughs> we got some work to do, right? Not very often I've asked for a pivot out of this horse, but that was ugly, right? That was ugly. <laughs> where I'm saying, like, I went to my foot and I found forward right there, okay? Remember that I'm not dragging him across with my hands, and that's where a lot of people get in trouble. You're going to hold him back with your hands. You're going to cross over his neck for your turn with this outside rein and hold his shoulders back for him. If you're doing that to get your turns, the second you put that wheel back to straight, he's going to be leaking off. And that's what he was counting on. He was counting on me to hold him back, right? I am not going to babysit this horse. You have to hold your shoulders up on your own, okay? So when I went to my turn, all I'm doing is pressing this outside rein up onto his neck. See where I'm staying in line with my hip? This rein is a straight line from his face onto his neck to my hip, okay? When you're going to do a pivot, don't get out here like this. This is rushing your horse around. If I put too much bend in his neck, you see how he untracks his back in? Look, we're doing a turn of the forehand now, right? And my hands are saying turn right. So you want to keep that line of communication straight to his face. So right here, turn. Batter. Batter. Good. Good. Question? Yeah, when he is pivoting there, he's stepping behind his front leg. Do you ignore that because you're working on rocking him over his hips? Bingo. Bingo. Yep, he's got to get over his back end. I can't worry about, like, he's going to be stepping behind because he was out here to begin with, right? So if I back both of those fronts up, then he's going to be stepping over the way he's supposed to. Yep. But what I, what I did right there is I caught him stretching out through that pivot, right? So I went to my outside foot and I found him leaning and being flat like that. So I'm going to back both of those fronts up. Get your weight back here. If he doesn't load this back in, then I have nothing to push to, right? So my pivot ought to be load that back in first, turn with your weight over your hip like that. And see how he'll pivot correctly then? Like he'll come across with his weight over his butt, and he's in a better shape to pivot across it, right? Now this isn't fluid, so we got to do a lot more work here. A lot more work here. <laughs> Mr. That's Jones. not good. <laughs> This is ugly. Wow, this is embarrassing. <laughs> We're going to back this up. But we knew this, right? We knew he's got a long way to go staying up and back off our feet. We knew that. So see how I'm not going to drag him across my reins? Just keep working him back. Turn. And I would bet he pivots good the other way. Let's see it. <laughs> I would bet good money he pivots good the other way. Okay, so coming across. All I care That's about right now is do you track... With your weight on your back end. Right. If his legs come, if his weight comes off of his butt and his hind legs start moving, you know he's not sitting like this through that pivot. Okay? So I'll come up here, I'll walk up, and I'll try to pivot the other way and we'll see what we got. <laughs> Cause that right pivot is bad. That's bad. <laughs> not a horsemanship horse yet, right? No. <laughs> Alright? So we're gonna stop, we're gonna back up, <laughs> very basic, back, and then turn. Come around. Oh, yeah, that's much better. And we know because this horse lopes better to the left than the right. So what does he do when I go to the right? Well, he gets his outside front way out in front of him. He gets his left front leg way out in front of him. Do you see how when I pivot this way, he keeps his legs back underneath of him? So much different pivot, right? Weight stays on the back end. Front legs are real smooth, real fluid across there. And to the right, we're tripping all over ourselves. We don't know where to put our foot. We don't know where to put our weight, right? So think of that as... All we're finding there is there's a dance step to get across there, and he doesn't have his weight in the right spot. So rather than beat him up about where he's putting his feet, right, and be like, well, is he crossing over? All I care about is where his weight is. Because I know if he gets his weight in the right place, he'll find where he's got to put his front feet, right? And I don't have to dictate to him where you're going to place these as long as you rock your weight back when my leg comes on. And that's really what that was about, right? So I came out here, and that's a good example of my training program. I came out here with an idea of some things I want to work on, and I found a big old hole. Well, that big hole just so happens to cross over into every maneuver I do, right? That's my right lead lope, where he's got his ribs hanging out over here, and he's all hooked up, and he's trying to hang this outside shoulder out when I'm loping to the right. It's my, my lead change, where he couldn't change leads because he had his shoulder too far over this way to swap leads. And what he's telling me is, when, I, when you put this leg on, I'm not going to rock this way and come across, right? I'm going to kind of come out here somewhere. And that's just not going to work for any maneuver I'm doing.
but we could find that problem right there in a backup and a walk. I don't need to load to find that problem, right? So we'll try it again. We'll come here, we'll back right there, and we'll turn. And see, like, I'm not looking for it to be perfect. I'm not looking for my backup. There, that's better. I'm not looking for my backup to be perfect. I'm not looking for my turn to be perfect. I'm going to get there by doing a lot of it, all right? Get there by doing a lot of it and turning loose and rewarding him when he does it right. So here's my backup. Here's my pivot. <laughs> Ugly, because his head's up, right? His neck is up in the air, so he's not getting round over his butt. They right? say he needs a chiropractor treatment. <laughs> <laughs> he might need his hocks done. <laughs> You're never going to win. <laughs> he's always like, call a vet. <laughs> And if that didn't work, maybe a chiropractic adjustment. <laughs> so, yeah, go ahead. Okay, listen, let me take my glove off. I have to read this one. Through it. Yep. Okay. All right, what do you think about the back leg that's standing still? I have a lot of people still stuck on them saying on the proper leg, like they turn the inside leg, the proper leg. When you're doing a horse and ship turn, like it needs to stick. Oh, does he need to plant a yeah. foot? Yeah. And then, he said, then she said, but I'm seeing a lot of pivots. Um, Pivot, pivot right, but standing on the left hind. Yeah, so when I back, when I, when I turn him, and this is what they're saying. So when yeah. I turn him <laughs> to the right, he's going to stand on this leg. So he's going to back his right hind around. I think that's what she's talking about. Are you talking about like how they have to like hold the pivot foot? Yep, so two answers to that one. One, in a horsemanship class, I don't care if he plants a pivot foot, all right? He's going to pivot around the middle, which is you. I think it's prettier and more balanced into the next maneuver if he rocks up and back. For the purposes of training, I'm using my turn to rock him back and open up his shoulders, right? So I want him to plant the opposite hind and back the foot away from the turn, right? So that'll be right here, backing. When I turn right, he should back up his right hind and stand on his left if he's doing it right. See that right hind moving away from me? Right there. That's what I'm looking for. So you say you want them to stick it? Yep, I want them to stick it. Yep. Because I want to build around this leg. Okay? Because I'm going to use a backup to a turn into a lope off, right? If I've got most of his weight right back here on this leg when I go to lope off, he's going to push off of that leg to lope. Does that make sense? So I'm going to use my, my backup into my turn to stand him on this leg so he can push off of it to lope off, all right? So, great question, good question. Yeah, that's a good question. Yep, so coming it is, around. It is hard to word, it's okay. <laughs> yep. yep, so coming around, that's what I'm really looking for. So I just want him to be ready to do the next maneuver. So most of the time, you're gonna stop here, right there, back to a turn, and lope off, right? Say so I could push off that back end right there, Here, back, to a left turn, to a left lead. You can push off that back end right there. So it's really about, in the training process, teaching him how to keep his weight on his butt, how to stay sitting on your back end. Okay, so I'm gonna use that kind of rollback to teach him about driving off his butt. So somebody had asked me the other day, how do you get your horse off their front end? Well, that's it right there, right? If I'm not using a rib cage move to, to push his ribs around and get his belly up that way, then I'm coming here, the back, onto your butt. So he lost it, right? He flipped his head up. So I'm gonna try it again. Back to a turn. To a low butt. Nope. See him leave? He ran into my hands right there. Can't leave. Gotta lift your belly to a turn. To a lope off, that's better, much better. A lope around again. So loping around, got my hip on the inside, like where he's at, much better. Stop, back, left turn, left lead, right there, roll up. Work on that rollback. That rollback's gonna be big for you in getting your horse's belly up, getting his weight on his back end. One of the big things I'm looking for is does that horse pop up to me through the lope off? So right here, back to a turn. I don't like this turn. 
I'm going to back to a turn. I'm going to back again to a turn. You can tell I'm not rushing him. I'm just setting him up. Try again. Bounce up. Batter. Batter. And it's just teaching him how to use his body to be explosive and powerful. That's better. Explosive and powerful out of those transitions, out of those maneuvers. When I ask for stuff, like he stopped on his front end right there, back, turn, check. Where are you at? Good. I like it. Question. Do you train in something other than a snaffle? Not very often. <laughs> I do a lot of snaffle work. A lot of snaffle work. Um, and you can see why, right? Like this horse, he bows up in his ears. He's got a lot of work to do dropping his neck down. That's why you see on him, when I'm doing my different stuff, I keep my hands really low. He wants to try to get above this bit. So I'm trying to drop him down a lot, right? I'm always trying to work him down there. I want him to know and learn how to operate his body with his top line flat or level, right? So right here, now he's stuck. I dropped his neck down and he is stuck. He doesn't know where to go. Look how much this slowed down when he had to drop his neck down, right? So that tells me he doesn't really know how to open up his legs with his neck down coming around here. So he's saying to me, I can't use my shoulders if my withers aren't up, all right? So that's something we're going to have to teach him how to do is drop at your wither and still use your shoulders, right? And that's going to be huge when we go in to do like horsemanship stuff, whether it's a square corner or long trotting, right? We go take this horse and make him into a hunter or a saddle horse. We go to extend him out. I want to know that he can keep his neck down while he does maneuvers, right? So this is not a pretty trot. Kind of scrambling. So here, I want to be able to cross these legs up by taking a hold of that shoulder and make him step across, right? I don't want him to bow up in his neck. So I'm asking for him to cross over his front feet right here in this maneuver, but, but keep your neck down, right? See how he wants to bow up? He can't bow up. He's got to stay down right here, looking for a flat neck, coming across here. And see how I just stay in the maneuver till he softens and gives me what I'm looking for? Then I'll turn loose. And see how much slower his legs are already? Just from like six, seven of those circles. Slowed his legs down a ton. So I'll come back across, I'll do the same thing. Lift my left hand. Open my right so his neck stays straight in front of him. Left leg, cross your legs over. Cross your left foot over your right foot. Left foot over right. Left foot over right. See, he doesn't like it this way. This is my right pivot, right? Everything that I struggle with is my right pivot shows up right here. So this is not nearly as pretty as my other way. Turn loose. See where my horse is at. See how much slower my trot is? So what I'm doing is I'm teaching him where to put his weight. So when I go to make him cross his legs over, I'm making him stand on this leg. Okay? Okay. What are some maneuvers to help teach the extended trot? So I'm doing right now. We're on it, right? <laughs> so right here, that crossover circle where you keep their neck straight is a big one for me, one of my favorites. Because if I work both sides of that, what I'm really teaching him to do is reach with one leg and hold the ground with the other. Does that make sense? So when he's got to cross over, he's got to reach out here, then he's got to stand on this leg the whole time this leg's reaching through. Do you see how I'm making this shoulder open and stretch? So it's the same thing when I go the other way. I'm going to make him stand over here so he has to reach and stretch this leg. All right? The ease of him going to the left is directly related to how can he get this leg back and do his shoulders stay open like this. Because if that leg can swing around like that, I'm going to have a shoulder that goes like this and like this. And that's how we're going to make him throw his toes and really use himself through that long trot, right? So working that trot both ways. I'll do it at a walk so you guys can kind of see what it would look like. And then I'll trot and I'll keep working. You'll see him stretch a bunch more when I'm done. So right here, keeping his neck straight in front of his body. I'm pressing with my left leg up by his shoulder. So he's got to stand on this right front and sweep around with his left leg, okay? Stand on his right, sweep around with his left. Stand on the right, sweep around with your left. Right there. I want his back legs to keep moving, not a pivot. So there's a certain amount of pressure that I'm going to off my outside leg. 
because too much pressure, if I really rolled that spur up into him, see, he should pivot and rock back, right? Remember we said digging our spur means lift harder. But if I lay that spur on kind of soft, he should just kind of cross over. So right here, I got to keep this leg close, my inside leg, my right leg close, because otherwise he's going to tip over through it, right? So some of that's going to be, I need to work more of my ribs on this right side because he tips over through it. You see I'm falling in right here? Can you see that on camera, Mace? Yep. Yep. Um, like his yep. body's like this, right here, falling over. <laughs> so this is not nearly as effective as my pivot going the other way. And all it means is that this leg is stretched out too far. So I come here and I go to my other direction. Hopefully you can see how much more square this is right here. Yeah. So he's not falling over nearly as bad right there. But if I can work him right here and stretch that leg out and over and make this right front reach, left front stand, then when I turn loose, I should have much slower legs and a prettier showable head and neck right in there. Because for me, when I long try to horse around, I want it to be slow and rhythmic and reachy. I'm looking for float. This is not a good trot, okay? This is not a good trot. He's flying around. This is low degree of difficulty, all right? Is it correct? Probably, but it's low degree of difficulty to me. I want these legs to be slow, reach, stand, control your legs going around there. Have body control. So when I come around here, body control, stand on your right, bring me your left. You see how pulling my left rein makes him want to do this with his head? Can you guys see that? It makes him want to bow his neck up right there. So he bulges and bows. See how he untracks that? Pulling this rein, I'm not looking to talk to the, his chin, all right? When I pull this rein right here, look how his chin is offset from his head. That's why you see me bumping his right hand. Look how it's going to straighten his neck out. So I'm tapping my, there. See, as soon as I brought my right foot in, he was like, oh, shoot, I'll get straight with my neck, right? When I bring this rein in, it does not mean, this move right here does not mean bring your chin over there, like that. And you're gonna find this with all of your horses at home, I promise you, all right? Super common problem. When you pull this right here, it should not untrack your horse right here, okay? When I pull that rein right like this, I wanna talk to his shoulder. So don't bring me just your chin. Bring me your shoulder right there. Keep your neck in the middle. Do you see how I'm asking with my right foot, right rein to bring that head neck in the middle right there now i can look down his main line and i can see a lot straighter line right in there still a little bulge right in there okay nothing about pulling this rein should bring his chin like that and make him bow out right here because all that's doing is saying when i pull you right here you're going to just leak out over here okay that's why it's always hold one tap the other and use this left leg because I want to keep him pushed up and straight in his body, when I, especially when I'm trotting, right? No room for bending at a trot. The straighter I can keep him at a trot, the better he's going to trot, the better he's going to reach, right? So right here, coming around, keep his head and neck straight. Takes all four corners, right? There, there. See me tap my left leg, holding my right rein straight in your head and neck. So now when I stop in front of you, move. see how his neck is straight in front of his shoulders? That's what I'm looking for. Remember when I stopped to the right, we were like this, okay? I'll stop to the right again, you'll see it. So I'm going to work my right trot, right, right leg, to keep everything pushed up on the outside so his neck doesn't bow into me, right? So I'm working pretty hard here out of my right foot, right rein to keep everything square and straight in front of me. All right, so right here, I'm gonna stop again. Move. Look where I'm at. Do you see how I'm off center right here? Look where his head is. His head is hooked off to the side of his shoulders. He is bent like this. That's why he falls right here. Because when I pull that rein, he's gonna bow like this and everything just leaks out over there. That is my number one problem with this horse. Okay, he cannot untrack his head and neck when I ask with that rein. He needs to keep his neck in the middle unless I were to go like this and bend him right here. I'm not looking for a lot of flexibility right here in the middle of his neck, okay? 
but that's lots of just this on your horse or this. This move right here, crossing over his neck, will make him untrack right there, all right? So if I were to cross over, he's pretty good at it this way. Look where I'm at with my head and neck in relation to my shoulders. Do you see that? I am counter bent right here, okay? This is not a good position for anything that I'm doing to the right. But you see how he wants to do that? So what we're gonna teach him to do is do not leak with your right shoulder across there, okay? Two ways to do it. One, lots of practice here, doing this maneuver, making it better all the time. Or two, just address the fact that he's not staying in line right here and go back to your side pass like this. And say, you have to stay with your shoulders off of this calf, right? Remember, like, most of the problems that we see, you see it up here. But it's coming from here, all right? It's coming from your, your withers back. So what I have is I have a horse that's turning like this when I add this rein right here. So anytime I make a right turn on this horse, he's just going to fall over. That's not going to work. So I got to make sure he respects this right leg, this leg right here, that he keeps everything up and square when I go to turn. So I can pivot around here, keep your neck in the middle, or looking into your turn. See where he's all tripped up? Right? He's not sure where to put his feet. If he can't fall, right in here. Stay up and square. So now when I stop, see how my neck is in the middle. Right? He's not looking off to the left going right anymore. He can't look off to the left and go right. And that is a problem, like you could bang this rein and it'll get you some of the way, but the rest of your problem exists right here in your, your leg, all right? He's gotta stay square with this right here. He can't be leaking over with his shoulder, all right? Because if I leak with my shoulder, you can see where, if I keep my neck straight in front of me and I leak with my shoulder, look what that does to my neck. And pulling my rein might straighten my head out, <laughs> but my shoulder's still leaking, right? See where I'm at? Like if I take him and I go, okay, I'm gonna pull this, you're gonna take your head over here, I'm just gonna bang on this. Look, his head is still over there, right? His shoulder is still leaking out right here. If I wanna get his neck in the middle, I'm gonna sit square and use my feet to keep everything square underneath of me, right? So now I know I've got the wheel straight right here. He's gotta find underneath of me straight, okay? You'll find with your horses that you've got the wheel straight, right? You've got even contact on both reins and you still don't have the same amount of horse on both sides of the bit, all right? If I have more horse over here, and there's a lot of weight right here, it's probably this shoulder that's leaking that way, all right? So keep that in mind when you ride. And that's why you see me ride really tight rein. I move up and down my reins a lot, because I don't want to have to change my position. When I ride like this, and I kind of lock my hands down against my thighs, I'll, I'll swoop around so you can see it. I want to keep his neck in the middle. I know my reins are even. I know my hands are square. I know my hips are square. So when I come through here, any problems that I see are out of my feet, right? My reins are direct contact on both sides. Any problems that I run into in his neck have got to come out of my legs. If you rode like this, it would force you to ride out of your feet a lot more, okay? So now I want to be able to come here. Okay, let's turn. We go to my left leg up by his shoulder. All right, took him a minute to figure out where I wanted to go. But look at my neck start playing around, right? See how his head and neck has come up? Well, if his neck is up there, where is his back? Hollow, right? It's hollow. So I'll come back here, back up, I'll turn. And I could go through my whole ride like this and just say, where does your neck leak, right? I'll lope off. Uh-oh, uh-oh. A little crooked. Back into it. Now he's gonna try to fall, right? Watch this. He's gonna try to tip over around that corner. So I'm gonna come around here again. I'm gonna ride him between my legs. He's trying to fall left on me. Right? I'm gonna turn, look, shift my weight back, press with my right leg, straight. Ride straight. Good. Turn, keep your leg, your arms locked right against your knees right here. Just touch the top to your knees and just ride around. I'm gonna stop. 
and you'll get a really good idea of where your horse's body is underneath of you between your feet, right? If you ride closer with your legs than you do your reins. You see how I'm riding real wide with my hands? Okay, so if you're ever confused, like, I don't know if my horse is really good off my feet or not, if he's holding a good position, ride with your reins wider than your feet and see what happens. And you might find that your horse is not between your legs at all, right? What he's relying on are your reins being closer to him than your legs, right? Do you see how that would be? If you can look at the lanes of this, if my hands are right here, keep your head straight. If my hands are right here, my reins are making a lane that's this wide, but look at where my spurs are, that lane is this wide. So he's staying between my reins, not my feet. And what I just did right there was I rode him the opposite. I rode my hands wide and my feet tight. You see that? So my spurs are close to his sides, my hands are not. So I'm giving him an opportunity to tell me, where do you go when it's just my feet, all right? So then by that same token, what that should teach you about watching me ride these horses, I ride tight with my reins and my feet. So I'm very particular about the position that he's maintaining between those two lanes, right? Very particular about the position he's maintaining between those two lanes. So I'm not giving him much room for error right here. So that whenever he leaves me and pushes and changes his position within those lanes, he's gonna get a correction for it, right? So that trot move right there is just testing those lanes about, right? So right here, oh, no, 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 we're trotting. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Try it again. We're gonna back, <laughs> we're gonna side pass. Now we got all hyped up, right? Remember I said nervous horse. So we're gonna slow his thought process down again. We're gonna stay right here. Let him think his way through his problem. See, I got, look at that, jar, jut, uh, mad, right? What am I gonna do? Maintain this position until you give me your ribs. Now, he's giving me his ribs, but he's not soft about it, right? He's not dropped in my hand, being nice and giving and releasing that to me. He's letting me take it from him. He's saying, fine, if you want it, you can have it. And I'm going, well, I don't want that. That's not what I'm looking for, so we're just gonna stay here. I might end up in this top corner. I might end up in that corner. I might end up down at that end of the arena. Whatever it is, until he gives me this and thinks his way through. You see how much tension showed up in his mouth right there? This is a horse that does not trust our hands gonna be nice to him. So he's making a mistake and I'm teaching him, hey look, I'm just gonna hold my position, right? We're just gonna stay right here till you get this shape right. And that is gonna be dropped in my hands, softly coming off this left leg around here. Good. Drop in my hand. Give this to me. This, more than anything, is why I have that tension in my neck, right? That bow behind my ears, because nobody allowed him to think his way through problems right here, right? So I'm just gonna say, he's gonna try different things. I want him to think his way through. There. See him soften? Then I'm out. You're gonna see a big lick and chew, big puff right there, or get completely distracted, we're gonna go to <laughs> right? He looks off in the outer space. We're gonna try again. Time here, push him around. And see, all I'm doing is just finding different holes within my horse as I go to do maneuvers. Remember, I started this trying to trot off, right? All of this correction came from, I wanted to trot and he loathed, right? So keep that in mind, I found a hole which I'm very thankful for, because that's gonna win me the battle in the long run, right? That's winning the war down the road rather than trying to win every individual battle. See, I just stayed calm, said, hey, that was a big mistake that you made, and whoa, 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 we're making a lot of mistakes along the way too, right? Why is that happening? Well, come back here. You got a problem right here? I didn't know that in the beginning. Right? I didn't know that when I set to trot off, but cool, thank you for showing me that you had a problem so that I can fix it now. Yeah, that's better. See the difference? Now he's gonna finish that, have gotten corrected, and be more relaxed, right? And his nose goes back out, and that's what we're looking for. And that right there is a good example of what I was talking about yesterday with building up your horse. We wanna build him up to where he can take a tough correction, right? So we can make that rule book really solid for him. But as of right now, 
This horse is not confident enough to make a really solid set of rules for him, right? If I were to really strictly define the rules to him, he would fry under that pressure. So I want to say, hey, you made a mistake. Let me help you. Let me show you, right? If that was one of our more broke horses, I wouldn't need to be this gentle about it, right? If it was a horse that I was like, oh, he should know better. He's been doing this for six months, eight months. Then I wouldn't need to be this gentle about it and this calm and this quiet about it because he should know better, right? So it's the difference between setting your alarm for five o'clock. If you normally get, at 11, get up at 11, it's gonna be very ambitious. That's a little too strict of a rule. And you can't beat that person up for not waking up at 5. But if you normally get up at 6.30, and one day you got to get up at 6, it's not a big deal. Right? So keep that in mind when you ride. you got to match your level of expectations with what he's capable of doing. And he's already told me, if you expect me to be up here, I can't handle that because I'm down here. So i got to meet him where he's at and build him up from there gradually. And that's a big piece of keeping your horse happy through the training process and, and creating a horse that doesn't react or explode when called on, right? You could see where he was trying to get a little big on me, right? And by staying calm and working through that, I'm gonna teach him that getting big doesn't work. So don't do that, don't make that an avenue. Just think about what I'm asking you to do and go on with it, okay? So that right there is a good example of what it should look like when they give it to you wrong, right? He tried to lope off. Rather than stopping and backing up and just going on to the next maneuver, I said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Why are we just rushing off that way, right? He had a momentary lapse and forgot what training program he was in, that we don't get to just rush off into the sunset, right? That you got to get round and you got to come here and we got to get right like this and give me this button right here. Give me this belly. Give me there. See him drop in, but I'm not chopping at his face to get that, right? I'm not going to beat up his mouth to get that. He's going to have to give that to me, right? And that's huge. He's got to give me those parts and pieces. I'm not going to take it from him. I'm going to let him figure it out, right? You can do whatever you want in between doing it right and doing it wrong, okay? But I'm not getting out till you do it right, and I'm going to keep kind of drilling on this for a minute to say, hey, let's not make that mistake again, right? Do we still make that mistake? Did we understand what that correction was about and why we had to stay in right there? He says, yeah, I get it. I say, okay, let's trot then. And see, now he trots off. Right? That problem wasn't, oh, he didn't know what a trot off was. Right? That problem was he got himself frustrated. So I got a chance to take a minute right there and address that mindset in him that says, well, I'm going to get nervous and blow up. Right? So a lot of people dealing with nervous horses at home, that's how you inspire some confidence in your horse. Okay? Doesn't mean I want him to be any less responsive. I just want him to make sure he's thinking his way through problems rather than reacting and getting nervous and tight and tense, right? Because I'm fairly sure that this horse knows how to trot off. Right? That had nothing to do with making that mistake back there. That was purely, I'm just not really focused and then I got myself mad, right? I tried to have a little fit, which is fine. You can do whatever you want in between getting it wrong and getting it right as long as you finish right, okay? So that's what I'm looking for. And that's how you can finish your ride, have a horse that's not upset, right? He's not chomping the bit and nervous, right? He's just like, okay, well, now I feel foolish, right? Now I feel kind of dumb for making that mistake, okay? Cool. Do we have questions? Um, if you guys have questions, you guys can type them up. Yeah. yeah and like we can hang out here for a minute. Yeah. Do you have your phone on your face? Yeah, I do. Right. Oh, it's cold out here today. It is cold. Oh, my nose. <laughs> Demi pulled like, the... Like, with, after that, there's not much else I need to do, right? Think about the things that I worked on. I worked on my trot, right? My long trot. I worked on my pivots a lot. I worked on my backup a lot. I worked on um, getting through a big mental block with him. So take those little victories, right? That's the part of horse training that takes the longest, is getting their mind right. So I'm going to take any mental victory I can get as long as I've had a physical enough workout along the way, right? I'll awesome. Yep. There you go. Perfect. Yep. Is that Rocky? Yes. That yes, was it Rocky. is Rocky. That was Rocky. Looks mm -hmm. a lot like the RL we had years ago. I think it is. It's Austin D. I think that's Austin Gooding. Yeah, it's so, Austin yeah, Gooding. Yep. That's, that's your Rocky horse. Yeah. Really cool horse. The horse that we have on 
Instagram or story. That's what we're talking story, about. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So yeah, that's funny. Uh, that is okay, really this funny. Is one of our salad tips. You're welcome. I got you. <laughs> uh, tips for willingness and feisty or testy mares. Tips in solving explosive lopes and greenies. Um, explosive lopes, my training wheels. Did stuff set of the training wheels. Um, so on green horses, young horses, they got to get used to things bouncing around and flopping around on them. Um, other than that, a lot of what you just saw right there, fixing some explosiveness in a horse, right? Where I don't want my horse to get like all nervous like that. Like you could see the fear in his eyes and his, his jaw got all tight and tense. He bared his teeth at me, right? We got to work through those, those moments, okay? And we got to have a lot of those moments. So you see where I have to be really calm to get him through those moments so he doesn't just freak out and continue to, to think that that's okay, right. right? So building confidence. It's sunny in New Zealand. You're so lucky. Oh. Oh, <laughs> it was summer. beautiful here like yesterday, but today is just those, terrible. Those are few and far between, right? Uh -huh. Well, tomorrow's just be nice, so. Yes, hopefully we will we be live get, again tomorrow. Yeah, so hopefully we can get like a nice sunny day tomorrow. Yep. Is there anything you guys want to see? Like anything specific you guys want to see tomorrow we can do? Yeah. Yeah, this is for you guys. So if you have questions or things you want work on, um, we've got a, a kind of a good range of horses. Um, this is a little bit more finished showmanship horse, but not my style of showmanship. So if you guys want to see how I would take this horse and kind of build on it to make it a little bit more advanced, that would be a good video too. Um, and then I had an idea where we're going to do some groundwork stuff, whether it's exercise for you or your horse, um, doing some of that kind of stuff too. Yep. That'll be good. Yeah. But yeah, perfect. <laughs> awesome. Very good. Well, I'm Jeremy LaRose. That's I'm Macy. Macy. Behind the wheel. Um, <laughs> Hopefully we'll be able to be out there tomorrow. Yes. My mom should be here. Yeah. It's easier when we can like read the chat together. Yeah. This horse is 12, right? 12 year old. Yep. yep. He's yep. 12. And he's had quite a bit of training, but not with us. No. So the training that he had, they got a decent foundation on him, but we want to take him to the next level. This is a super talented horse that should be able to go on. Um, any tips for a very lazy two-year-old to not make him too dull long-term? Bounce. Bounce in your seat, right? Make sure that you, you don't go to your feet and carry him around. One of the most common problems that we see is a lazy horse that people like, this is your trot, right? Or this is your walk. You got to keep begging him along. Do not get in that habit. Because if your legs are busy keeping him going, how are you going to make shape and position out of it, right? Think about that. If your legs can only do one job at a time, so if your legs are busy keeping him going, making the self-carriage for him, you can't go on to shaping or doing cool stuff when you're loping, right? Okay, you can see this again. We'll keep this up for 24 hours, right? It's been a little longer. I've been yeah. a little generous. <laughs> and then... But it's going up on YouTube. Like, every video we've done so far is up on our YouTube channel with corrected audio. So we can run it through our computers and fix the wind noise and fix some of the spots where the audio is a little bit patchy. Um, so they all go up on the YouTube channel. And I want to drive people over there because we are so close to 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is our goal. Yep. I think we're at like 980. Yep. So you guys have been awesome this week. Um, so continue to spread the word so we can get that up on YouTube because then we can go live on YouTube, which is, I think has way better options as far as like clarity for you guys and stuff like that. And then we still have our um, giveaway going. Giveaway it ends, going on. when does it end? Like a couple days, right? It ends on Monday or Tuesday. What day is it? <laughs> the 6th. Yeah, Monday. It ends on Monday. So we're going to draw. No, it ends name. April 7. Tuesday. It ends on Tuesday, <laughs> the 7th. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is why I have you. Yeah, and then we go, we put them from YouTube onto our Patreon site. Yep. 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 And they'll, they'll be, be up there YouTube forever. Live. So you can just go there and watch them whenever yes. you want. Yes, and they'll be live on Patreon. And there's like, like, this isn't the first week we've gone live, and it's not the first time we put videos up on Patreon. I'm fairly certain there's like 75 videos on Patreon. Fairly certain. Yeah, there's a ton. There's a ton. Yep. And then how to fix a horse that tropes, like trot up front and lopes behind. Push them up. Push them up. Push them out. Really, four beating or troping or whatever you want to call it is a lack of position. Okay? That horse is too straight. He's too straight and he's shut down. So what we do with all those horses, like this one was the same way. He wanted to four beat really bad and we got him. Push him up. Push him out. Get those legs true. Get that rhythm and that cadence back. And then you can take your horse and bring him back correctly to go slow, okay? But they can only go as slow as they can stay correct, okay? That's the big thing for us. And then Nancy said, how do you get into the giveaway? If you go onto our Instagram page, it's LSH Live, yep. and then there's a video of peanut loping. 
Um, there's a song. Or it's on Facebook too. It's on Facebook. Oh yeah, it's on Facebook too. But it's peanut. It's a video it's of a peanut, short loafing. Clip of peanut loafing. Yep. yep. And then you have to tag a friend and subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is La Rose Show Horses. LSH Live. Or, oh, you changed it. I changed it. Okay, it's LSH Live. You get to subscribe to that, and then you'll be entered in a drawing, and that gives you a whole free month of um, access to our Patreon page. Yes, yeah, our, our premium Patreon. So that's yep. the twenty-five. So you can get all those videos. So just go to our page, tag a friend. Yep. Subscribe to our YouTube and channel. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. And then we're going to do a live video. We're going to put all the names in like a cowboy hat or something and yep. pull a name out. Yep. That'd and it'll be, be really fun. So we'll really do that good. probably yeah. on Tuesday. <laughs> a couple days left for that. Yep. That'll be on Tuesday. We'll do that. Yep. And then um, Kathy said, I got a jogger that walks up front, very heavy up front, and stung up behind. Strung up behind? Yep. So that, those, those trot corners that I was doing, that trot where you're making them stand on one and step across here, very, very, very good for horses like that because he can't, like, get lazy up front. He's got to get handy with his shoulders, right? If you're, if you're getting lazy up front, if you're getting lots of weight on your front end and they're not really driving from behind, stop, turn, trot out. Stop, turn, trot out. Trot circles, trot squares. Tighten your horse up, right? All that means is he's getting long out here. So if you bring those legs and make him do things to bring these legs like this, he's going to have to rock his weight back and get his shoulders moving. Yep. Okay. Very good. Awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in today, guys. We love having you here. We love doing these videos. We're going to do a lot more. It's a little cold today. It's freezing. <laughs> so. But we'll be live tomorrow. So you guys have questions. You guys can ask, ask them tomorrow. Yep. Yep. So do that. Um, real quick. Our horse is anxious when you ask for a lope. He's quick. Yep. Uh, the side pass, right? Don't just like, like a lot of times I see people whose horses are nervous or anxious about things and they just like, Shut it down real hard, back it up, and then just go back off. To me, that's a lot like playing pinball, where you just like pull the lever back and then you just sling it back out and watch that thing just shoot out there. So make sure that you do something else with him and then ask for your transition again. I love doing those side passes that we did on one of the very first live videos we did coming back. Um, like this last week, I think it was- I think it was Peanut, wasn't it? Peanut, yep. yep. We did a lot of rib control stuff. I did some of it on my warm up with him today and yesterday, right? where I take that rib and I start moving over and then I ask for my transition, the more you can make your horse think about taking his shoulders and going like this, the better off you'll be. Don't think about if your horse is nervous, he's probably jumping through the transition and grabbing a lot of ground out there. Make him take his shoulders and go like this and then lope up. And you'll, you'll take out a lot of the nerves for your transitions, okay? Because stopping and backing him up and then just going back off doesn't address that issue because he's still gonna be nervous with his front feet. Make him open his shoulders up. Make him cross and take ground like this, and then he can lope his body up, and you can allow him to go forward to the next stride. And the video of us doing that is on our Patreon page. Yep, that's on Patreon. And on I think Bonnie put like the website, the link in here. Ah, so if you hit Bonnie's that, yeah, I know she's the best. And you can, if you'd love to watch that video, you can go to Patreon and watch it. Yep. 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 Perfect. Is that it? Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. We'll be back tomorrow. Thank you. We'll do another one of these. Hopefully it's a little warmer and my hands are so cold. You're cold. I'm, I'm cold. cold. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thank Bye, you so much. Bye. Thank you. you.